Hello, I'm just uh, in the uh, yoga room for the uh, usual tour of the surrounds. The yoga wall behind me there. Some of the artwork. Some of the artwork there. And um, I'm going to just sit with these candles here for a minute. So uh, I'm going to turn the light out. And uh, that's actually. Light bulb slowly going out. It's an LED. Let's so see a little close up of the fading LED light that I turned off a few moments ago. And uh, so I think I showed you the blankets I was going to sit on. Light the candles without an awful lot of purpose. And see what the significance becomes. Oh, that was interesting. We got a, a flicker. other matches. So we're back, same difficulty we had last night, my connection failing, so I'm actually going to yet again try and move the, the uh, placement of stuff in the complete dark. <laughs> that kind of figures. This is back in the zone. Switch y'all. Say hi again. I kind of just moved our candle and such back here. So we will try this again. And we'll see if uh, we can uh, get a candle. I can't quite see what you're seeing. And I'm just kind of left guessing. you saw any of that because <laughs> I was looking at the cameras at the candles not the camera but we're gonna sit now with, uh, with the candles
question today about Tibetan uh, practice related to funerals and lighting a candle every day for 49 days. So, seven sets of seven. Seven different sort of trials on the path to uh, the Kunlun, the Great West, the immortal field. And then we're talking about the idea of lighting a candle every day for somebody for 400 days and uh, I hadn't yet done a meditation on uh, camera today so I thought just light a couple candles it can be an interesting thing to get the biofeedback of your breathing when the candles are close enough and see the way the candles flicker and dance, the way they bend. The candles light from your breathing. It'd be very helpful feedback. Like, oh, that was a little fast or a little tight or a little heavy. There's also a certain uh, shift in the brain state looking at candles. either alpha or theta kind of states because it can be somewhat trance-like just to watch the fire or a flame it's an interesting thing because ordinarily if you have a candle for sure but uh, certainly often a fire uh, you know both of them can be represented as very powerfully destructive forces I generally think of them as catalyzing forces Um, but to look at a candle, hey buddy, how you doing? Did you know we were meditating and decide to come for a visit? Yeah, that's very nice of you. Come on. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, to everybody right there. Yeah. So it was interesting. I was just about to, uh, use the term or the phrase no fear um, <laughs> which is kind of interesting because uh, I was just about to say that and then the cat came in uh, of course representing curiosity and the lack of fear yeah what do you think about that are you stopping to visit the candles yeah yeah that's a good thing to do and uh, so when we can behold the safe fire or candles uh, being an example of that but I'm also thinking you know like a safe fire in a fire pit or a stove or something we can sort of behold something that's a very very powerful expression a very very powerful force um, but without the fear right I mean, the notion of a controlled fire is quite amazing you know uh, in our human history could not have been around all the time there must have been a period before they were controlled yeah or readily controllable or ordinarily controllable or uh, you know by default we presume that fire in a fireplace is controlled of course imperfectly controlled not in every case and uh, so it's an interesting thing to be able to you know look at a candle or a safe fire a relatively safe fire and recognize that we can really tune in to that to tune into that really extraordinary force in all that it means but without engaging it with our own fears right so right now I'm looking at this fire you know this is a thing that people would fear on a daily basis that 
lived in a thatch roofed house or in a lightning prone area, right? And I'm, I'm looking at the canva with, without any fear coming from my psyche to it, without coloring this real experience of it. So I can kind of experience it as a biofeedback. I can experience it as a theta alpha trance state shift in the self and the psyche and the mind. And I can also recognize it as this really wonderful ability to enter into it without the baggage that people would ordinarily ascribe to fire. And I can be reminded that if something fell over that was flammable and in those instants where, you know, the candle becomes a fire in the room or something spits out of the fireplace and, you know, you scramble. You know, there's that moment where you're likely to be instantly reminded of your own apprehensions about it. You need to go out now? Yeah? There you go, buddy. All right, thanks for joining us. So, I'm gonna see if I can give you a better view of the candles for a few moments. I imagine that it's gonna blow out I don't mean blow out the candles, but I mean in terms of uh, the exposure from the camera. But let's do see if I can give you the glow. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to visually rest in the candles. Uh, and this happens to be three, but for you it might be just one candle. So I'm not confusing myself by looking at one, then the other, then the other. I'm just settling anywhere. one candle.
station for him to look. Thank you.